All right, guys, so I am very honored today to be joined by Himi Das, who is the Director of Growth Strategies for Pond5. So many of you guys that were watching some of my videos a few weeks ago about what happened with Pond5, well, they had an announcement essentially letting all the music composers on their catalog know that they were now allowing AI models to come in and train off of the music in their catalog, and they were certainly paying all of you guys that had music in there. So many of you guys were you know, pleasantly surprised to see some new income, but of course, alongside of that pleasant surprise was some new fears and some new anxiety about, well, what does this really mean in the long run? What are these AI models really doing? How are they training on our music? And you know, the big, huge elephant in the room is, what are they gonna do with our data after they have our music? Are they gonna just replace us, us all? Are they gonna learn how to create our music better and cheaper and faster than we can? So I, I know that myself included, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty with this new paradigm shift kind of happening. And I think one way around that is to have direct human conversations. So Himi is, I'm you know very grateful for you and everybody at Pond5 for making yourself available to come and talk to us uh, directly here, at least through this conversation. So I want everybody watching this to know that the spirit of this conversation conversation is not a gotcha kind of a thing where I'm trying to put them on the hot seat. I really am just curious and open about where their mindset is. I really want to find out, um, you know, Himmy, where you guys are at in terms of your strategy, your thinking, like why this is a new business model that you guys are pursuing, what you ultimately feel it's going to mean for your composers and submitters in the long run. And I want everybody to know as well that I encourage all the comments and all the feedback you guys want to give. But if you do have um, you, you assume negative intentions by any of my guests on my channel, not just for this interview, for, for any interview that I have in the future, or if you have um, just really disrespectful things that you're gonna say, I will just delete your comment and I will remove you from my channel. I just wanna let everybody know that. You are free to disagree. You can come in and, and share your thoughts and opinions in a respectful way, of course, but this channel is about productivity and making sure that our, our conversations stay productive. So I just want everybody to know, fair warning on that, okay? So Himmy, thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate your, sure. your time. Why don't you just go ahead and first start off and tell us what is your position at Pond5? What is it that you do? And how are you involved with this new AI, you know, data set sort of venture that you guys are jumping into here? For sure. Sure. Um, you know, I think I'll start off by just saying, Jesse, like, thanks for opening up your platform to us as well. You know, like we can send out all the information we want, the contributor platform that we constantly update, et cetera. But it is nice, like you said, to have this direct human to human kind of conversation, be able to speak to your audience and your followers and really just have a conversation Um about all this stuff. So with that said, so I'm the director of growth strategy here at Pond5. What I do is I try and think holistically about a lot of our functions together to kind of get them moving in the same positions or same directions together. So our marketing, our product, our engineering, a lot of those functions all kind of, you know, be a partner to and help them just make sure that we're, again, moving along in the same direction. And so that strategy piece of it, a lot of what I do think about is, you know, things that you said when it comes to these new emerging technologies, when it comes to thinking about one year in the future or even you know five years into the future, what's the direction we should all kind of be collectively moving towards. So that's why I'm so happy to kind of be on this platform and talk a little bit about how do we see AI, which is obviously something that's on a lot of people's mind right now. Um, how do we really interact with that in the next couple of years? Great, and so let's just dive right into the data set. So a couple of weeks ago, you guys sent out an email and an announcement to all of your uh, music composers that there was gonna be new revenue sources coming from AI models training off of their in, their music, and so you were going to immediately start paying them out in their accounts for that. So give me the backstory about how that happened. Did these companies come to Pond5? Was Pond5 seeking out new revenue sources? How did all that sort of get started? So the opportunity really came to us. You know, if you've been looking at industry news over the past few months, you'll see that technology has really been taking off when it comes to AI. And also now that Pond5 is now part of that Shutterstock brand since we were acquired back in 2022, um, Shutterstock's really been charting a path in this space. So knowing that combined Pond5 Shutterstock forms one of the biggest libraries for both audio and visual content, uh, every major tech company in the world kind of knew us collectively and wanted to use our creative content to train those new technologies. And so they knew that we and Shutterstock had that quantity, we had that quality of content needed to do just that. So, you know, the it was a pretty natural fit in terms of how these opportunities really came about. Um, they came to us and we were able to service them. So we, again, we're one of the only people that can really do this. So being a big player in this space uh, made sense for us. And so we're excited to be a part of it. In terms of what they can do with the content, 
again, we view this as a really, you know, an expansive way to think about new revenue streams. So again, not trying to interfere with our core business at all. The approach that we took to these deals that what they can do with the content, what they can't do with the content is that they can use the content to train um, their models for whatever they need it for, whether it's, you know, um, vis you know, using our visual content for driverless cars or generative models or whatever it might be. They can use our content to train those models in specific, but they can't use them for, you know, outside of that extra commercial purposes. So they can't use a video in a advertisement, um, in their in a commercial or something like that they can't use uh music in the background of their podcast if they had something like that so we've limited to really just thinking about you can use the content to train your models for whatever you need them to do but you can't use that content that we send you for purposes outside of that okay so yeah let's let's dive into that a little bit so let's say um an ai generative model pays pond five starts training off the music so essentially what they're allowed to do is create a model that could potentially create generative music like the music LM model, something like that. Um, so they're allowed to do that, but they're not allowed to basically take the music that they studied off of and then go like put out a bunch of YouTube videos using that music or go place those songs in a TV show. That's correct? That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. So the, the big kind of concern I think for a lot of people is when they do get data, you know, they sort of learn and train off of the music in the catalog of Pond5, and they have these models that can then generatively create their own music. The fear is, you know, what what's going to be done with that data afterwards, right? Will these companies potentially create a Pond5 alternative or a competitive AI version of Pond5, right? That's basically like, sure. yeah, you can go pay the human composers of Pond5, or you can pay a lot less and use this generative AI music that we've created. So, have you guys placed any restrictions on that type of use? And what is your general, I guess, philosophy or, or thought? What's your thinking on that potential situation happening maybe in a couple of years? Sure. So generally, you know, the way that we that we tend to think about about music and AI is that we're going to continue to 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 poke around and prod around in this space. But really, our first commitment is really to our artists and the way that we think about them and aligning their interests along with all everything and anything that we do. So generally, when it comes to music, when it comes to our visual content and how we use it, there's a lot of ways in which we use that content. So there's going to be, you know, not just generative, but all the other things that I had mentioned a little bit prior in terms of driverless cars, in terms of, um, you know, all those things. So this was just a natural fit for us. So we saw this opportunity and we decided to take it. Great. Now I want to ask you about the word opportunity, because I think that is where a lot of our sort of disconnection is happening right now. Because sure. when you say the word opportunity in terms of a, a, an opportunity for Pond5. Can you elaborate more on what that word means to you? Like what, can you just like sort of uh, unpack that a little bit and let us know exactly what does that opportunity mean? Sure, so opportunity to me means, you know, when we're thinking about our core business line. So obviously a lot of that is, if you look at our licensing terms, it's a lot of it is commercial applications or editorial applications in TV, film, et cetera. And so when we're thinking about opportunities, we're thinking about ways to really expand our business beyond what we're doing in those realms. So when you think about these licensing deals that we have with data sets, um, really what they are is, again, there are very few applications outside of like trading these models that are really gonna be using um, like that quantity or that scope of data. So knowing that, you know, on one hand, we really restricted the usages of these like companies to use them in very, very limited ways. They're not allowed to use them for commercial purposes, et cetera. When we do these data set deals, um, they're again, very, very restricted in scope. They're not gonna interfere with our core business lines of advertising, TV, film, et cetera. So when we think about opportunity, we're thinking about expanding the business in new ways. And so we kind of saw AI, and again, these data set deals as a way to do that. So would it be a correct to assume that an opportunity when you talk about expanding business, meaning more revenue for Pond5 and more revenue for composers? Yeah, that's right. So again, you know, we try and take the most ethical approach, whatever we say in our, you know, contributor agreement, the way you guys are paid out is the way that it's always been. We don't do anything back of house to do anything different um, in terms of like your payouts, et cetera. So 
the way you guys get paid out is the same as it's always been. And again, we're taking that ethical approach of just honoring whatever we say in our contributor agreement to you guys. So it's more money for Pond5. It's more money for you guys. And again, like just to just to really emphasize this one, we don't think this is something that's going to interfere with our core business lines. Really what this is, is to expand new ways of using our content because there, again, there are so many, or so many, you know, like, or not a ton of ways to really use a whole library like that, except for these specific, you know, purposes and training models. Because I think that was the biggest fear that a lot of us had was like, we all had this, you know, potential, you know, worst case scenario assumption that companies like Pond5 would be doing this to basically shell out a couple of dollars for their composers now, and then essentially partner with these AI companies later and replace their entire catalog with AI created music based on the data that it trained from composers. So can you just maybe just directly address that potential fear and concern? How do you guys respond to that? Sure. So definitely a part of these data set deals is going to be for generative content models. So again, the future describing where it's super scary and people are going to be getting replaced and the long-term plan is to just move all the artists out of our marketplace and replace them with these models is not true. That's not how we're viewing it. Really, the way that we kind of view artists, they're still super important to us. Again, like we wouldn't be taking along with Shutterstock, these more ethical, you know, or as we can be to try and take these like contributor funds, et cetera. Um, you know, very recently, we just partnered with um, AI for Good, uh, where we'll be going to their global summit in Geneva. So we can talk about the ways that we can, you know, safely align human interests and AI interests in the same direction and really chart a path forward that, again, I keep on trying to use this word ethical because that's really what we're trying to do, um, just be a partner. So the future of pushing all the artists out of our marketplace is, is not true at all. I personally, myself, like I very much view the role of the artist in society as one that's not really going to be changing. Now, if you think back to the 1800s when a ton of good music was being put out, Mozart, all the classicals, etc. Some of my favorite bands today, like Aphex Twin, Boards of Canada, like they wouldn't have been around during that time, you know, like music goes through fundamental shifts and changes. But one thing that doesn't really change, and again, very much my personal view, is the role of the artist. So that last mile of who's pushing the frontiers, it's always, you know, in my head, going to be human led in some way. So these models that train off previous works, et cetera, they'll be able to create and generate, but who's going to be pushing kind of the barriers of what's going to be able to be produced is, is still going to be human led. So that's kind of how I view it. And so again, this kind of scary idea of you guys being super deplaced in the, uh, in the long run, um, make no mistake, it'll be transformative. Like I'm really bullish on technologies that are really going to help artists to create stuff better. So again, going back to that electronic music example, right? Like those guys wouldn't have been around back in the 1800s. So using these technologies to help you guys, you know, edit your tracks better or for visual artists to, you know, remove their backgrounds, upload stuff like that, up res videos from standard definition to high definition. These are all things that we're kind of exploring with these technologies too. So I'm just super excited. Um, to push the barrier forward and still have it be human led and to be a partner of all these, you know, things that we're doing to really align the interests of our artists and uh, the larger creative community. Very cool. I, I appreciate that answer. I want to ask you now about the specific companies, the AI models that are coming in and paying to train off the music. Do you guys release that information to the public? Are you able to share which companies, which models are actually doing this right now? So you can always take a look at, um, you know, we have press releases every time we're super excited to be working with a company. Most recently, NVIDIA for 3D models is one that we just announced a partnership with. Uh, but they're going to be, a you know, one thing that we definitely always try and do is we work at the speed of innovation, which is very, very fast, as you guys all know. So we probably won't put out a press release for every single company that we work with. Um, but for the big ones that we're super excited about, we're, we're definitely, you know, looking forward to letting people know how we're going to be working with these um, with these larger companies, you know. And again, we talked a little bit about generative in terms of we are using um, our visual or audio content for those purposes, but there's a ton of other stuff out there in terms of 
you know, what exists outside the creative community. It's not just generative. And again, I know that's what's on everybody's mind. But more recently, our partnerships with LG for medical imaging, we recently worked with a company to kind of train uh, driverless cars with our visual content. There's a lot of really exciting stuff that goes on behind the scenes that's not just generative. And that's going to be a part of these data set earnings as well. Okay. Um, Now, this might be an unfair question that you might not be able to answer, but I think based on the fact that I'm I'm imagining you have talked to some of these companies that have asked for some AI data essentially for their models. Because, okay, so what just happened this last week was um, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman testified. I don't know if you guys caught some of that, but I definitely paid attention to the part about music. Now, his answers to me felt like he was sort of dodging the question because the, the question coming from Senator Blackburn was, Basically, are you using copyrighted data, music, to train your models on? And and will you vow to not do that in the future if you have been doing that? And his answer wasn't yes or no. His answer was, well, Jukebox was sort of a research project. We just wanted to show you guys what it could potentially do. We didn't get a lot of users. We didn't really disrupt anything. So basically, no big deal. <laughs> and that might all be true, but it also feels like a dodge because it's like, but did you, right? Did you, did you go to Spotify? Because I know there's a way you can basically go to Spotify and learn from basically the entire catalog there without asking for permission and without paying for it. It's definitely possible. So as you've talked to some of these AI companies um, and they're saying, okay, we're going to pay you, right? They're paying you guys money to do this. They only want to do it for research purposes. They're agreeing to not do it to release commercial projects. What are they doing? Like, why are they spending money to just see if something can be done? Is it just purely for the fun of it, the giggles of it, to see can we make music by text to music, you know, input output kind of thing? Or, you know, what is your conversation with these companies led you to believe? Like, why are they investing in this kind of new technology? Sure. I mean, so the reason to kind of invest in these new technologies, like I said, whether it's in the creative industry or outside the creative industry, because again, um, a lot of these things are being used for outside of generative model purposes, um, is always to, you know, do things in a way that that haven't been done before in a more efficient, more expedited way. That's what these models are supposed to do. These are what algorithms are supposed to do for us. They're supposed to expedite the ways in which we kind of create and facilitate processes. So no, I wouldn't say it's probably just for the fun of it. You know, they are using it to advance whatever industry that they happen to be in, whether again, it's LG with their medical imaging or whether it's um, a bunch of different companies with, you know, training their cars to be driverless by detecting what does a human look like? What does it not look like? Um, what do signs look like? What do they say? Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons that you could want to use our visual and audio content for training those models. So the scope is really going to be varied. I will say it's probably not just for, you know, for, for the giggles of it. It is to advance their industries, but the myriad of ways in which you could do that and use our content in so many different ways is probably one, you know, half of it is like what's to come in the future, but it's also the really exciting part of it, right? Who knows whether, um, who can possibly predict six months ago all the ways that AI would be u- being used today. In six months, we'll probably see something else where there's a whole different, you know, host of different ways in which AI is gonna be used. A good follow-up question to that was that I think there was some uh, pushback criticism I was hearing was that the way that Bond5 released it was a sort of, hey, we're doing this already and you're getting paid. And now if you want to opt out, you can go ahead and opt out. But there wasn't a sort of initial kind of like buffer range in terms of, hey, we're going to start doing this in a couple of weeks. And if you don't want your music trained on AI models, you've got a couple because that's what just happened with the audio jungle uh, decision. They gave their members, I think, two or three weeks to essentially opt out. So um, I'm sure you guys have heard that from some of your members. How do you guys respond to that point of criticism that, you know, there wasn't a sort of a little bit of a buffer range in terms of letting people decide, hey, before you just start training off my data, let me pull it out of there first. Yeah, sure. So, you know, we're working at the speed of innovation, like, again, these deals, et cetera, the way that they came about had just been skyrocketing kind of very, very fast. And so while we're one of the only players that that can kind of approach this space, we're also not the only player that can keep up with this um, with what the what, what they're asking for so knowing that our artist community puts trust in us to make as much revenue for them as we can. Again, we wanted to get ahead of this curve. We wanted to act fast. At the same time, we knew that some people wanted to kind of opt out at the same time, that that was going to be a likely scenario. So in parallel with while we're working on these deals, we were also working on the opt out structure to make sure that you guys, whoever wanted to pull out, was going to be able to. But again, we act as, you know, we act in good faith to really push our artists community forward to make as much money as we can. So like I explained before about how I think this is like a new expanding on top of what we already do business opportunity. That's why we acted as fast as we could to kind of make these deals. 
Okay, yep, yeah, fair enough. I, I totally get that. So let's finish up this one with a sort of long-term vision. What do you see, um, or what does Pond5 see, uh, in the next two to five years with AI generative models kind of becoming more and more, um, you know, higher quality, being a little more impressive as time goes on. Obviously, Google Music LM just released their kind of experiment version of it. And some of it does great. Some of it's not so great. I don't know if you've played around with it yet, sure. but it's kind of interesting. Um, where, what's the long term vision um, two to five years with Pond5? Where do you guys go with this new landscape kind of coming uh, on board with us? Sure. So what I will say is I definitely see us again, you know, we're partners with Shutterstock. We're getting a lot more ingrained in kind of the AI space as well. All of our teams are learning from their teams and so on and so forth. So as like Shutterstock is pathing this space forward, we're also going to be doing that at the same time, like in our DNA and our core DNA um, has always been trying to be art, trying to be artist friendly at the same time. So we're going to try and keep those values which we've done and Shutterstock has actually been really great too with all those other things that I mentioned in terms of their contributor fund, in terms of how they're partnering with, uh, with the UN for this AI for Good Global Summit. Uh, so we're gonna be along the, on, on the ride for AI stuff. We're gonna you know, continue to do these data set deals in opportunities and in ways that we think makes sense for us. So you know, not just very, very short term, but very long term as well. These models need continuous input from you guys, from additional content that you guys make that's going to be pushing the envelopes. I think I mentioned a little bit earlier how, again, on a personal level, I really think that the people who are going to be pushing forward the music space, be creating new innovations, et cetera, are still going to be human led in some way. So I don't view um, you know, AI really replacing humans. I view it as a transformative process where a lot of things in the past, you know, the musician has changed a lot from the 1800s to today. In the same way, I think artists are going to be changing too, and we're really, in, in, you know, excited to invest in new tools and new ways for, you know, again, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, for you guys to really like expedite your processes in terms of how you make music, etc., um, and investing in those tools to to help out the artist community is one thing that I'm personally really bullish on that I would love to see on the Pond5 site within a few years. Um, just how can we make your guys' life easier? How can we make it for easier for you guys to really innovate, push the space forward, and continue to be a part of these data deals, um, whether they're more continuous or on a one-off basis? And so that's kind of how I see us, you know, going into AI. Again, we don't want to be the last at both sides on this one, it's gonna be a transformative space and we wanna be along for the ride. Um, and we wanna to continue to be the innovators in the space really. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not just being along for the ride, maybe it's, you know, driving the ship at some point and who we want to be driving the ship with us is everybody that decides to opt in into, into this and be a part of this kind of exciting, brave new world. Well, I appreciate that. And Himmy, thank you so much for just taking the time, uh, all you guys at Pond5 for responding to my request to just do an interview. Sure. I think this is the kind of stuff that needs to happen, obviously, a lot more often, because I think it's just having these conversations around things, especially when it's such a scary topic like this, you know, sometimes sure. just the one sheet with the text doesn't quite, you know, sort of have get into the nuances that we did in this conversation. Sure, sure. I'm sure we'll probably hopefully have some more conversations down the road. I hope you guys are open to that. But just want to thank you totally. guys for doing that for just, you know, coming on here and talking to us. If anybody has further comments, questions, concerns, they're a Pond5 member, can you direct them to a certain link, maybe an email address somewhere where they can go get further information on this topic? Yeah, sure. So our support channels are always open. I, you know, our CS team, I, I love those guys. They are super well versed in everything that we do. Um, they are amazing. So feel free to reach out to the CS team. Um, I'm also available. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you have something like that, feel free to add me there. Um, and I'm happy to answer anything and everything. Or you can always go to our wonderful support team who are, again, incredibly well versed in all this stuff. And we talk to them every single day about the messaging that we put out to their artists. And they're such a wonderful resource if you've ever talked to them before. So feel free to hit up either one of those two. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. And again, remember everybody, put your comments below. I definitely want to hear what you guys feel about this now when you get a little bit of a deeper dive. But again, I have to remind you, please keep it respectful. This is going to be a respectful, productive conversation. I certainly feel like it was. And we're going to definitely move forward now and kind of see where this technology grows and where it's going to go. So Himmy, thank you so much, man. And we'll uh, hopefully talk thank to you, you guys very soon. I wish you guys all the best with Pond5. Super excited to talk again, Jesse.